our experience with EVs here on Behind the Wheel have tend to more often than not lean towards the the more expensive side, the high-end side, with examples like the Ionic 5, the Ionic 6, the EV6, the Audi e-tron GT, and even the BMW iX. These are examples of when the brands really want to show off the best of what they have, flagship EVs, if you will. Today, however, we're going to look at the other side of the coin, a bit more grounded to reality, a lot more grounded, really. If you've ever wondered what a more affordable EV looks like, well, then allow me to introduce this, the 2024 MG4, which starts at just 1,468,888 pesos for this standard model. And it makes it one of the more approachable EVs in our market today. The natural progression of questions would be just exactly what did MG do to get it down to that price? Stick around to the very end to find out on this episode of Behind the Wheel. The MG4 is actually a pretty popular car up in Europe. In fact, it's won several awards, including Car Wow's Car of the Year. So yeah, I am very excited to show you around this car. But I must say, don't get your hopes up way too high because this, after all, is the standard base model. If you want something with a little bit more extra, a bit more kit in it, if you whip out the AutoDeal app, which by the way is available on the Android Play Store, uh, you'll find that the Lux variant has a premium on it of 270,000 Philippine pesos. We don't have the Lux variant yet, but we are aching to get our hands on it and we hope to do so soon. Please subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss out on that video. To say that the MG4 is a head-turner would be somewhat of an understatement because, my goodness, we've gotten a lot of looks from this automobile. And I'll tell you why. It's because the front clip doesn't look like an EV at all. It actually looks more like a sports car with the sharp angles, the sharp lights, even the intake down below because of the radiator. I understand that it is an EV. You still need the radiator to cool the batteries and the air conditioning after all. So the front clip looks very, very sporty, doesn't scream EV. However, there are parts of the car that do, which include the wheels as you see them here down the side. See, these are steel wheels that are 16s with hubcaps on it. Now, okay, full disclosure, these actually aren't the final wheels of this particular automobile. It's actually going to be 17s and the hubcaps are actually going to be in a different shape, which I'm told look a little bit better. However, it's still a hubcap nonetheless. And the reason why we actually don't have the wheels right now is because Jack stole this thing out of the showroom without telling anybody. Well, of course, that's what stealing means, right? Moving down the side, you've got 147 millimeters of ground clearance, a good shape down the body. I like these lines that are on the belt that continue from the front and then continue with this line down the rear. Now, while the front doesn't scream EVs, the wheels kind of whisper EV. It's the rear that really, it's got a mega horn saying, look at me, I'm an EV. Now, while this is a hatchback and not a crossover, and a hatchback is supposed to come all the way down very smoothly, there is this wing that breaks it ever so much and really is the center of a lot of attention when you're passing anyone because this, this really screams EV. And this spoiler right here, I'm not saying it's as big as, let's say, a 911 whale tail, but it does look like it makes the car ready to race somebody like Lightning McQueen. It is quite huge. You've got your third brake light in the center, and then of course on either side you have your rear tail lights with a nice design up on top, and then the tail light itself is in the shape of a letter T for Tirona. How nice! Thank you very much, guys. Open her up, and you are looking at 360 liters of space. Now, while it does sound like a lot, it actually is a lot. Unfortunately, because of the way the car is configured, it is a hatchback, not a crossover, you won't be able to fit a balik buying box in here, even if you remove the tonneau. However, I will point out that you can fit an 85 liter box and a hand carry into the rear with the tonneau still in play. So it really is a lot of space. 
And then of course, when you fold the second row, you can put a pair of balikbayan boxes in there without any issues. I will however say this, that if you do decide to load the automobile with balikbayan boxes, it does have a slight caveat, which is, I need to show you, if you push the balikbayan boxes in, there is a bit of a lip. So that might do hell on your lower back. Oh, or age, or both. Now, the size of this vehicle is very important to mention prior to the amount of legroom that I have. See, the length of this vehicle is almost that of the ZST. In fact, it's a little bit shorter. But the space that you have inside is like the same as a compact sedan like the MG6 or even a Honda Civic. Because look at the amount of leg room that I have. I can easily cross my legs. Headroom is actually pretty decent too. That's more than a hand. That's very nice. However, I will say that this being the standard or base model, you will notice that there are some missing things back here. Like you'd expect leather seats. Unfortunately, there are none here. You'd expect perhaps a center armrest with cup holders. Again, there's none. But I will tell you what the car has, which is a boatload amount of space. Look at the center tunnel. It's barely there, which means a third passenger is not going to be an issue at all. However, it might get kind of warm here in the summer because there are no air vents found. There is a charging point, but unfortunately, no air vents. Now, inside the cockpit of the MG4, and I don't know if you've noticed this, but the engine is running, or rather the motor is running, so I can keep all the functions on while we're doing this review, and it's absolutely silent, obviously, because it's a full electric vehicle. The first thing that I noticed was that the steering wheel is quite the odd shape, really. It's uh, kind of bulbous on top and at the bottom. And I realized that it's made this way because it wants to make sure that you have a clear view of your instrument cluster up front, which is, by the way, a full color display in a format that is very, very square. So they want to make sure that you can see everything there. Uh, the buttons on the steering wheel feel good to the touch. Uh, however, they are piano black, so that's going to cost a lot of fingerprints. On the left side, you have your drive functions, including your cruise control. And on the right side, you've got your audio controls and as well as your phone. Now, it looks kind of odd, and this is the theme for the entire cabin, really, that it looks like it's, they probably lean more toward fashion more than function, really. For instance, on the steering wheel, you do have your cruise control on the left-hand side, but it isn't labeled properly. It's just a picture of the steering wheel. Now, that could be lane keep assist or cruise control. You don't know. And on the right-hand side, there's a couple of squares and a star and whatnot. So it does take a couple of days to get used to it, which you easily can, but it would have been nice had it been, I don't know, a lot clearer. Minimalist continues over the dashboard. It's very flat. It's very clean looking. Broken up only by this 10.25 inch that has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Uh, I will also say that I like the layout because it's horizontal instead of vertical so that it's easier actually for your eyes to go from there to there to there to look at Jack to check his legs. Whoa, nice legs, Jack. You've been going to the gym. Uh, come on, you proud. I know you're proud. Now, Minimalist is good, but it does have its pitfalls if you can call it that because if it doesn't have it here as a button or as a function that you can get to immediately it means that those functions are found inside the infotainment system so getting to those systems might actually take some time for instance you do have an on off air control button but you can't control the flow of the air or the coldness of the air or the hotness of the air depending where you are within the buttons here you have to get into the system and get to it same thing with the audio you can make it louder or softer but you can't change the audio that you're listening to whether it's radio or your apple car CarPlay, Android Auto, or perhaps even a USB stick with some MP3s on it. You still use MP3s? Really, Jack? There is a decent amount of storage space inside this automobile. You've got a decent sized uh, glove box. You've got two cup holders found here in the center. They're not big enough to hold Jack's bottle. Unfortunately, not a lot of things are big enough to hold Jack. But you put normal sized cups and yes, they will definitely fit in both. Then behind that, you've got a sliding door that reveals more storage. You can put your wires, keys, cell phones, and whatnot there. There's also a pad up on top to leave your cell phone down under. And then a center console that's actually pretty deep. I'll show you how deep it is. You can fit the cup and watch this. 
Play the song! It's in the interior where you feel where MG held back a lot when it comes to this standard variant. And I can't <laughs> repeat that enough. This is the standard variant, not the looks variant. For instance, you don't have wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You have them, but they're not wireless. You also don't have a wireless charger, although there's a spot for it. Then, of course, there's the, the fact that this is not leather. Then, the biggest caveat of them all, depending on how really you look at it, when you put this guy in reverse, there is no reverse camera. There's no camera of any form in this automobile. When have you ever heard of an automobile with advanced driver aid systems, but does not have the most basic of basics, a reverse camera? Just feels kind of odd, really, although they might have good reason for that, and I'll explain that a little bit later. What I can tell you is where MG did not compromise on is just exactly how this vehicle drives. Regardless of how affordable it is or how it, they may have skipped up on a couple of things, it's still the full EV experience. And if you hop into the car right now with me, I'm going to show you exactly what that feels like. Oh, and before we do, two things. Number one, do please subscribe to our channel because we create these videos. Yep, you guessed it. And number two, funny in this car, there is no start-stop button. All you got to do is step on the brake, wait for the ready light to come on, and you're gone. Let's go! Now, I know we wanted to start, or rather I wanted to start, talking about how this car is none different when you're talking about the Lux variant and the standard variant. And we wanted to tell you all the attributes about it, it's just a bit about being an EV. But I couldn't, for the life of me, not start by driving it like a hooligan first because it is, after all, a full EV and the power is on top! And it is just so much fun. I am throwing this car around corners, even though the tires are nothing great or to be, to be spoken of at all but yet it's so stable and regardless of how much of a, like a hooligan that I'm driving, Jack still feels safe inside the car. And even as we're gonna take this turn right here, the car doesn't screech at all. Like it's so stable. And look, I'm driving it with one hand and I'm going at like 40, 50 kilometers per hour. And just like an EV, the power boom is on tap. But what gets me is just how absolutely stable and planted it is. The electronic steering wheel doesn't allow a lot of play because it's just straight all the time. It feels like this car is more like a, like a sports car really because when you point it, it just shoots in that direction. It's so much fun to drive this car. When you finally graduate from high school and decide to drive the car like a normal human being, uh, the first thing, the very first thing that will come to you is just how quiet the car is. And I'm not talking about just because it's an EV quiet, no. Because there's barely any vibration coming into the car, uh, whether it's from up front, which there is nothing up front, or from the road. It's just so quiet in here. It doesn't even have the futuristic chime, whine, or whimper that other EVs have, other more expensive EVs have. Here, it's just quiet, and not eerily quiet, it's calming type of quiet. I like it. The suspension too is something else. As we've shown you, the car is so much fun to throw around. It doesn't rock, it doesn't dip, but just because it's fun there doesn't mean that when you're on a straight road that it's firm and bouncy. Nope, not at all. It absorbs anything on the road pretty, pretty good. And the fact that, well, this is, after all, electronic steering, but it just feels like it's so flat and it's well, well behaved on the road that you don't have a lot of inputs to put in because, well, it just goes straight. You know, I will say this, and this not, might not be a very popular opinion, but I feel at the price point of this car, it actually drives higher than what you're paying for by a factor of about 500,000 Philippine pesos. It's just, I don't know how MG does it. Instant acceleration is an attribute of EVs, meaning to say that when you step on the accelerator, it's like a light switch, it just goes. There is no spooling uh, for a turbo, there's no fishing for a gear that it wants to go down to, and not like a CVT where it sort of like cranks up before it actually goes. You just step on it like this, and it goes! 
<laughs> now, the power that the electric motor pushes out is 168 horses and 250 newton meters of torque. Now, I gotta tell you, that is much less than what you would find in the Lux variant. This is, after all, the standard. And the range on this is 350, whereas the Lux is closer to about four. But I gotta tell you that if you think that because owning an EV, you've got some range anxiety, okay, yes. Maybe when you first start, yeah. But Jack and I figured that if you own this automobile and you make it a habit to charge the automobile every time you get home, there is no way that you're going to hit range anxiety. And if you decide to take it outside of town, well, there are charging stations now available, not just in malls, but larger gasoline stations with quick and fast chargers too, DC chargers at that. Now, when we did take it to a charging station, this was a fast charger, mind you, we were able to achieve 33% gain by charging it for only 10 minutes. And that cost all of 631 pesos. Here's the thing, at that rate, you're essentially paying the same amount as you would with an internal combustion engine if you were to load fuel, the same amount of distance that you would get. But that is a fast charger. So if you go to a lower charger, like a 22 kilowatt, or let's say, for example, the smaller ones that you have at home, then obviously it's going to be a lot less. You're essentially paying for speed, really. Now, I know we said we already graduated from high school, but we are in an EV, and I would be remiss if I didn't do this. 40 kilometers per hour, here we go. Huh? 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 Achoo! <laughs> again, 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 there's nobody behind us. Huh? Jack? Achoo! <laughs> Look, I gotta say that this must be my very favorite MG to drive. Of all the MGs we ever tested, this, this would be it. Now, we haven't tested, obviously, the Marvel R. I don't know what that's gonna be like, and it's also an EV, so that might be a lot of fun. But as of the moment, it's gotta be this for many reasons, including the fact that it's affordable, it's an EV, and I can, I really can live without some of the creature comforts that you would find in other vehicles at this price point. Some people, however, might think differently. I suspect that there will be a lot of people that will complain about the fact that it lacks features for the price point that they're asking. Like the no leather, the no reverse camera, the, the no wireless Apple CarPlay or Android Auto or wireless charging. I get that. But the truth is, I can actually forgive it because it doesn't represent an internal combustion engine. This is a full EV. And at that price point, I can forgive those faults, if you can even call them that. Well, maybe not the reverse camera. That might be depending on who's driving. But I will say this, as an EV at this price point, you're practically looking at something that represents the Vios or the City or the Mirage G4, the entry level into the EV market. If you're ready to jump in, this might be your automobile. And if you're ready to buy, head on over to autodeal.com.ph because I guarantee you it's worth at least trying the get code button. Really is.